yeah, look, it's um, disappointing we're dealing with those things across the course of the weekend. I mean, it's disgraceful behaviour um, that's just not to be tolerated you know, on field or off field in our game. Um, you know, we spoke to the dogs yesterday. Um, Jamara Bowl reports is, is going OK and has got the support that he needs, but um, we'll do all within our power to find out who that was from the crowd. Um, the allegations of what was said is totally inappropriate. Um, and if we can find who it was, they're not welcome in our games. Um, so we're working with the AFL and, and the stadium to try and work that out. So it was just one individual? As far as we know, there was a, a comment that Jamara heard, which was totally inappropriate um, from, he thought, a St Kilda area. Um, so we're working to try and find out who that was. And so that ban is facing a lifetime ban? I'm not sure what the ban will be. They're certainly not welcome in our games. Um, first thing first is to find them, speak to them, educate them, and, and they're not coming back to St Kilda games anytime soon. As far as that penalty goes, is, does education need to be part of it? I think it does. Um, you know, it's 30 years in two weeks since Nicky Winmar made the statement he made. To still be dealing with stuff like this now is completely inappropriate. Um, so banning is obviously what you do to, to preclude them from entering the, the games going forward. But education is critical to understand that that sort of comment is inappropriate, the effect it has on the people. You know, they're, they're entitled to have um, a safe workplace, our Indigenous players and our multicultural players. And if it isn't the case, it's got to improve. And as far as the section of the ground that it was from, uh, do we know exactly where it was? And we, we know where Jamara thought it was, so we're certainly investigating that now through the stadium. Uh, it's not as easy as you might think to try and find that isolated comment. So um, he knows where it was from, and we're, we're identifying that now. Social media stuff as well after the game. Yeah. Yeah, look, it's obviously social media is hard to control. Um, people get a platform now to say what they what they want, which is um, unfortunate, especially for Jamara's mother to have to receive that sort of um, comment on her social pages. Um, all you can do now is let the AFL Integrity Unit uh, try and find the people involved. Um, as I said, if they think they're welcome at our game, they're not. Um, social media is obviously a, a broader platform that we can't control, but um, if identifiable, yeah, we'll take the most action we can. If it's a member, do they have their membership thrown out? Absolutely, yep. Have you checked in with your Indigenous players how they feel after the weekend? Yeah, David Misson, our head of football, um, let all our players know yesterday what had been happening and the, the steps we'd taken. Um, obviously, we've got some really senior players in our club, Brad Hill and, and others who um, you know, take this very seriously. We've all, we're fortunate enough now to have uh, Indigenous welfare officers at our club, uh, Auntie Katrina Amon, who's... Um, herself, the mother of football, you know, Carl Amon. So to utilise you know, her expertise and um, her support for our playing group is critical. And I know she spoke to her contemporary at the Bulldogs as well to make sure Jamara was OK. So there's plenty of um, steps in place at our club, but we can't control our fans. And those fans that uh, think it's OK uh, need to know it's completely wrong. Has the club reached out to Jamara or is it appropriate to yet to apologise? We haven't reached out directly to him. We spoke, I spoke to Mick Baines yesterday, the CEO. As I said, Auntie Katrina spoke to the Indigenous Welfare Officer at the Bulldogs to make sure Jamara's OK. Uh, the dogs are obviously looking after his well-being. And, um, so clubs are really well uh, set up now to look after our players. Um, as I said, if our fans don't realise the hurt they cause, they need to know and need to stop. You, you mentioned Nicky. You know, you're a former senior AFL executive. You've been around this a lot. Do you despair that it keeps happening? Like, you know... Yeah, I, mean, I think we all despair. Uh, if a player of any background can't feel safe in their workplace um, and that people in the crowd think it's OK to say those things with others around them. We, we encourage all fans to call out this behaviour, to stop it, to teach your kids what is right, uh, to educate them on how people feel and how, how they're made to feel. Um, yeah, you certainly despair. I mean, as I said, 30 years ago on April 17, um, Nicky did what he did because he didn't feel safe, didn't feel respected. Um, it's still happening. Um, so all we can do is call it out, educate, support our people um, and hope that it, it, uh, it's, it stops but that's obviously a work in progress for me.